Anyways, it also comes with this metal compression ring here and this is really important because this here is made out of metal. And as we all know from the Tarmac SL7, they also had a metal compression ring. That combined with the lack of chamfer caused the fork failure. And well, guess what? This Delhi here tank doesn't come with a chamfer, so I'm sorry to say but I'm not very impressed with it. Okay, I'm back after like 2 months. Now I was just browsing Aliexpress, as you do, looking for random stuff or quote unquote window shopping, when I came across this, the Delahir tank machine, and I was like, oh wow, a new bike from Delahir. And then I looked at the price tag and I was like, oh! So as you know or don't, Delahir offers 3 frames, the 4, rest, and now the tank. The 4, which is the one I own, costs 390 US dollars. The rest costs 400 US dollars and the tank costs 680 US dollars. Now this lineup kind of reminds me of the specialized lineup. You have the Aero Bike, the Venge, the Lightweight Climbing Bike, Tarmac SL6, and then the all-rounder Tarmac SL7. Now for the Tarmac SL7 and the tank engine, they kind of look the same. Drop seat stays, threaded bottom bracket, semi-narrow tube shapes, disc brakes and fully internal cable routing. I'm talking handlebars all the way down to the brakes. Hopefully unlike the Tarmac SL7, the tank engine won't eat its own steerer tube. Now one thing to note, the tank engine comes with these kind of specialized Aerofly 2 looking handlebars which is pretty interesting because on Aliexpress you can find tons of them, some seeming pretty good and some which just straight up give me nightmares. Anyways, the frame weighs 875 grams, the fork weighs 400 grams, and the seat post weighs 200 grams, making it a total of 1,475 grams. Now for the Dead Hill Rest, the lightweight climbing bike, for fair comparison, I'll be using the specs from the disc brake model, but hmm, they don't have the specs for the disc brake model. I wonder why, eh? With a little bit of digging, I found them. Okay, 970 grams for the frame, 408 grams for the fork, and for the seat post, it's the same as the rim brake model, so 180 grams, bringing the total weight up to 1558 grams. So for 230 US dollars extra, you get a frame that is 83 grams lighter, which doesn't seem very interesting, but as I previously mentioned, you also get the fake specialized bar and stem, which costs about 86 US dollars lessening the blow to 144 US dollars. But what else do you get for 144 US dollars? You also get fully internal cable routing which might be good or bad depending on who you are. I personally hate it because I work on my bike myself so it will be an absolute pain in the ass. Also they don't show how the cables go through the headset so you're left to wonder. Because it uses the specialized Aerofly 2 bars and stem replica, I would assume it roots the same as the Tarmac SL7, and we all know how well that went. But after a little bit of thinking and you know digging, this is how I think it roots. These two holes here are for the gear cables and these here are for the brakes. Also I just want to ask something, can you run mechanical shifting in fully internal routing frames? Because this doesn't look very smooth in my opinion. I know most of the time when you have fully internal cable routing, you use like DI2 or ETEP. I've never really seen a mechanical frame, you know, uh, mechanical shifting being used in fully internal frames, but yeah, do let me know because I can't seem to find any threads talking about this online. Anyways, it also comes with this metal compression ring here and this is really important because this here is made out of metal. And as we all know from the Tarmac SL7, they also had a metal compression ring. That combined with the lack of chamfer caused the fork failure. And well, guess what? This Delhi here tank doesn't come with a chamfer, so I'm sorry to say but I'm not very impressed with it. Um, if you want to know why the specialized fork failed, I'll link an article in the description written by Hambini who is qualified to talk about this unlike me. But yeah, it's hard to overlook this headset issue, so hopefully they change it in the future or something, like making it out of plastic instead of metal or something. Anyways, back to the benefits you get for paying 144 US dollars extra. You also get a potentially more aerodynamic frame, 
I say potentially because, well, most of these smaller brands don't have equipment to measure aerodynamics and CDA and all the other stuff, so yeah, potentially. You also get a potentially stiffer frame due to the differing cube shapes, but again, I'm not qualified to talk about this. Um, you know, as technology moves on and as time moves on, you would assume that they'll get better at the carbon layout, so yeah, potentially stiffer frame. So how else could you spend 144 US dollars? Some new sexy Costello bar tape? Some fake Oakley car toast, which look awesome by the way? Uh, New Jersey, or just freaking bloody Santa Empire. So yeah, at the end of the day, it's your choice whether you want to get the Delhi tank machine. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, just wait a while for some other people to test out the frame. If you want it, just, you know, go ahead, I can't stop you. Just consider some of the things that I've mentioned, but anyways, if you have learned something, which I hope you have, or at least have been entertained, feel free to like and subscribe, but as anyways, I will see you guys next time. Good night everybody!